Hello everyone and welcome to the setup guide for the FPS scopes creator pack. Now this pack is available on the Unreal Engine marketplace and you can find a link to that uh, in the description below. Now to begin, let's just open up the map general. And um, as you can see, we have all of these parallax materials that work for both signs and for these scopes here. Now, what I'm going to be showing you is how to make custom scopes and how to tweak the material parameters so you can make whatever scope um, you see fit. But as you can see, there's a really nice parallax effect. And if we left click, we can both power on and power off uh, the site. And as you can see, when we power it on and off, it scales, everything scales to the correct distance. And it, it I think it looks really futuristic and sci-fi. So without further ado, let's get into um, the video. I'm gonna be showing you how to add some material. So what we wanna do, um, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of included textures and reticles. And um, under the reticles folder, we've got 23 different reticles. And under the frames folder, we have 12 different frames. Now frames are basically the up close details and um, reticles are more of the stuff that you use for aiming or to fill out the middle and the far points of your site. Now, the good thing is uh, these are totally interchangeable. You can use frames to frame up the center. It's just the scaling is a bit um, unique. For example, uh, the frames often have thinner lines because they're so much closer, while the reticles have a bit thicker lines because they're usually displayed back within the site. Now if we hop into the materials folder, we have the master material and the reticles materials. These are all of the material instances and um, we're basically able to create our own. So in order to create your own material, let's go create, let's go to their master material and create a material instance. And I'm going to call this material instance mi underscore reticle underscore guide one. And we're just going to drag this into our reticles folder so we have everything organized. I am going to override this material and set this to our guide one material, which, as you can see, this is the starting reticle material. So if I open this up, this is what the editor looks like. And we have access to layers one through nine. We have overrides for layers one through nine. And this basically allows us to override the color. We have the color, the brightness, so I can scale this up and make the site super vibrant, or I can scale it down back to one, have it not glow at all. We're just going to leave this at uh, 25 for now. We also have a hue shift and this allows us to easily change the overall color scheme of our reticles. And this is especially useful if you have different gradients. Instead of changing each layer color individually, you can just hue shift the entire gradient, which is super nice. Let's get started. Let's make a simple rotating um, reticle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable, let's say, five layers. Let's enable all of these. And we're going to set the first texture to a frame. And we want, let's say, the frame to be up close like this. And we're going to set the distance to negative five. Now, the reason why the distances are negative is because it's the plane is right here, as you can see where this shadow is, and we want these to be offset inwards. So that's why all the distances um, are negative. Now you can make the distance positive and it's like it's appearing outside of the plane. And I'll show you what that looks like. Look, like it, it feels like it's popping out, but um, for our effect, we want the everything to be parallaxed inward. We have frame one done. And let's add the same frame. And we're going to offset this to negative seven. Now this gives us a cool like 3D pain effect. We can actually make this at negative six just so it's a little bit closer. So now that's what we have um, going already. And I think that sets up a nice frame for the rest of our, our reticle. Let's move on to layer three. Now for layer three, let's add this reticle 16 here. And with this reticle, let's move the distance to, let's say, negative 20. And then do the exact same. So copy this and paste it for layer 5. And let's change the distance to negative 30. Now, what we want to do is set layer 4 to reticle 15. And we're going to have layer 4 be at a distance of negative 25. So it's kind of in the middle. And we want this to be rotating. 
So let's set the rotation speed to five. Now, when we save this, we can see that it's rotating inside the inside the level. So let's actually undock this and move it like this so we can customize and see it in real time at the same time. For layer three and layer five, I wanna scale them down just a tiny bit. So let's say 0.75 and 0.75. What I think would be pretty cool is if we had two more rotating components. Now the way we can do that is by going up and enabling two more layers. Let's copy and paste these over. Now the way you can do that is you can hold shift right click and as you can see it flashes and then that means you copied that parameter and if you hold shift and left click you can paste that parameter. Now that makes customizing this super easy because you can literally just copy and paste the different parameters over rapidly. We need to set the rotation rate to point um, to five. Now, what we can do, this is the middle one, so let's change this to three. Let's change this to, to one, and this to five. So it progressively rotates quicker and quicker. So as you can see, we have like this cool portal looking effect. I think it's a bit slow. I think one is a bit slow. So let's start it out at two, four, and then six, two, four, and six. And I think that will look a bit better. Yeah. So if we jump into the editor, we can close this out and we can run over and pick up the site that we made, which is this one. As you can see, we have like this cool portal swirling effect. Um, I think it looks a bit, a bit weird considering they're so close. So let's, let's change this up a bit. Um, so let's, instead of having that rotate, let's have, let's have the two outer ones rotate at the same speed. So let's, let's say the speed is five for these two and let's have, let's stop this from rotating and let's set this to that reticle. So we have something where we can accurately and precisely aim at. So let's go over here. And as you can see, this is what we have so far. In order to make the scope more accurate, what we can do is we can set the accuracy reticle at a larger distance, let's say negative 200, and then we can scale him up like that. And that really exacerbates the parallax effect. So now that we've done that, let's actually add one more layer and this layer let's have it as a bottom frame so what we can do is we can type in frame let's use the dots now the dots really add like another layer of depth especially if we change the color so in order to change the color of a particular layer what we can do is we can go over to the layer override uh, section where we can override the colors so now as we as we do that we can see that it has changed the color of that particular layer. Now, what's cool about this is we can change the single color to any color we like, but the overrided color will stay the same, as you can see. So let, let's set this back to that electric blue color, and let's go down to our layer override, and let's set the color of this to like some sort of deep orange. Now what's cool about this is we could also change the, uh, the strength of this individual layer. And now it looks like we have some sort of bolt, like an electric bolt holding the reticle together. Now, I'm not too keen on how light this blue is. So let's actually change this to like some sort of deeper blue. And then let's single out these rotating layers to have a lighter color. So that's layer four and layer six. So if I go over here and I override layer four and layer six, we can set these colors to be very similar and we can also increase the strength of them. So let's, let's copy this and paste it here. So now we have some sort of energy ring um, with this reticle. So now that's one reticle done. And what's cool about this 
is we can pick it up and now that's what we're looking through. And as you can see, there's the parallax effect, um, which really shows the futuristic and like sci-fi star citizen looking uh, reticle that we made. So like I said, there's all of these different combinations that you can choose and pick from. For example, let's say we wanted to customize this reticle really quickly. What we can do is we can open it and then we can do a hue shift and make this, let's say, a deep red or a purple. And let's say we wanted to increase the brightness. We can change this from 24 to 50. Actually, let's change it to 75. And now we have like a really vibrant purple site. So if we go over here and pick this up, we can see that it really is customizable and um, you can tweak every single layer and all the materials. Now, what's really cool about this is you can open up the master material and add more layers. So let's say you needed a site 10 layers or 15 layers. You can fully customize that. What's also really cool is that let's say you wanted to combine different sites. So let's say we wanted to combine this site with this site. Well, what we can do is we can get the material um, of this site. And in this case, it's reticle demo 21. And what we can do is we can actually duplicate the reticle mesh, make sure it's uh, childed under the site and we can change the material to demo 21. So as you can see, it has overlaid both of those. Now, obviously you'd want to make sure that they both line up so you don't have uh, these offset, but the point is it's fully and completely customizable. Now, if I go into the materials, uh, you can see that they are performant. So yeah, um, one thing that I would recommend is to change the anti-aliasing method. Usually it's set to temporal super resolution. And in this case, I would recommend sending it to temporal anti-aliasing. It just prevents a lot of the ghosting that happens with the bloom post processed effect, especially since we have a lot of bloom like on our reticles. So if you enjoyed the video, uh, like and subscribe. And if you need any support or anything, just reach out to me through my support email address, which will be linked in the description below. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So until the next one, see you guys.